Hi, my name is Gary C. Clement, and you're listening to The Gary Clement Show on G2Network.com. Today on the show, we are privileged to have with us Miss Brianna Butler, who's a former Miami Heat dancer and Miami Dolphins dancer. She's also an actress, where she's appeared on the series Atlanta. Her most recent role for television is American Soul, The Soul Train Story. So she's here today to talk with us about her life, her career, and turning her passion for dance into a new dream of acting for television and recording music. So here she is, Ms. Brianna Butler. I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, I come from a really large family. I have six brothers and two sisters. We all grew up in the same house. The parents are still together. <laughs> um, and it was, uh, you can imagine what that, that was like. It was always uh, something at home. It was always a party. Um, I miss them dearly. Uh, you know, I don't get to see them um, too often. Most of us are still in Florida. But, um, yeah, I had a great childhood. My parents took great care of us. We were always out doing things. Talk about the influence of your mother and father in your life early on. They always made us feel like we could literally do whatever we wanted. They, they never made us feel like we were limited. They always poured in us love and support. I still wonder how they made it to all those basketball games and football games and cheerleading practices. But, um, yeah, they were very much present in our lives. You've always loved and been a dancer. Talk a little bit about how that has impacted your life. Yes, I started off as a dancer since I was about five. I started in church, actually. My mother was uh, the choreographer, if you will, or the leader of the dance ministry. I want to say that's how I really got started. And, um, you know, from there, I had been in cheerleading and dance since elementary school. It literally as far back as I can remember. Before I could walk, I felt like I danced. <laughs> um, I went on to do it competitively in, in high school. And um, and then I did it in college for a little bit, only for my freshman year, because then I I went and did it professionally. I um, I started uh, with the Florida Panthers, which is an ice hockey team in the NHL. I went on to do the Miami Dolphins and the Miami Heat as well. So uh, collectively, I cheered for eight years professionally, but uh, pretty much my whole life prior to that. I see. Okay. And you mentioned something about church. You know, what's your, what is your religious background? Uh, I'm Christian, definitely. Big up, Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. Okay. And so to go from, you know, to say, say to go from, you know, dancing and stuff in school, you know, like I said, that's one level, but then to, you know, move up to something like, you know, the Miami Dolphins, that was way away from church. You know, how did your parents, you know, when they found out that you were going to do that, you know, how would they – you know, how, how did they, uh, you know, think about the, what was happening with that? Uh, well, to be honest, my dad, you know, obviously he was not too uh, gung-ho about the uniform more than anything. I mean, he had known that that had been my passion for my whole life, but he was like, he wasn't happy about it, to be honest. He was like, oh, I don't know about this one. But at that point, I was 20, I was 20 years old, and I'm like, look, this is something that I really want to do for myself. You know, it's just a uniform. It's not like I'm walking around in it every day, you right. know. And um, he understood. Uh, you know, he came to support me at my auditions, even though he felt how he felt. And then um, once I was actually on the team, and he saw, you know, it wasn't all that that bad, and it was a great. Uh, it was great for me, um, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally. You know, he was. He was with it. He was there at the games all the time. And then by the time I had uh, transitioned and uh, made it on the heat, you know, he was just number one supportive dad. So, <laughs> And my mom, you know, she, she never really had a problem with it at all. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, and this is interesting because the, the other day we had a conversation, you know, about this R. Kelly thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but there's all of this Me Too movement and all of this stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, did you were you affected by any of that kind of activity, you know, from, say, you know, from, say, high school up until, you know, you started doing the pro stuff with the different, you know, with the different teams? Did you ever have a problem with any of that? Um, well, I felt like I never felt um, 
I've never felt attacked or or harassed or anything by any of the people that I actually worked with, you know, my coworkers or the people who were in charge of me or anything like that. It would always come from fans, you know, like being a, a cheerleader. I don't know what they think were some type of dolls or something, not actual people. <laughs> so uh, I, I would say in general it was a good experience, but you always have those uh, – creeps here and there that feel like they can grab you up, you know, by your hips and, you know, kind of touch it appropriately as you're taking photos with them, like on the sly, you know, so uh, I had to pop off a time or two, um, I but <laughs> but uh, I want to say that was the worst of that. I see. Oh, okay, okay. And at some point, you know, you went on to get into acting, and um, you had an opportunity to, you know, um, I guess, you know, go to school for theater and film and get a degree there. Talk a little bit about that for me. Okay, yeah, that's how uh, that's how I got into acting. Uh, honestly, like I said, my whole life was about dance, dance, dance. And as a kid, I used to look at TV like, this is pretty cool. Like, like most kids wanted to be on TV, so... I got invited to a workshop, acting workshop slash class with my friends, and I was I surprised myself at how quickly I was able to pick up lines and remember them and bring them to life, so much so that uh, I eventually switched my major from pharmacy to theater and film in college. Um, and, you know, my parents were like, ooh. Mm, you sure about that? <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. They just want the best for you. They want you to make a lot of money. But pharmacy just wasn't my thing, and I felt like I had finally found home when I when I found that. So um, I, I did it, switched my major, and I got my degree at FAU, Florida Atlantic University, and uh, it's just been a wrap from there. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Your first, uh, you know, actual uh, gig for acting, was it a commercial or, you know, talk a little bit about that for us. Mm, what was my first, my my first thing I want to say, yes, it did start in commercials. And uh, I think I, it was the energy, the energy drink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did a, a commercial there. It was like half acting, half dancing. Um because it was simulating a music video almost. Um, So that was my first time, I want to say, on screen. And my first actual gig as an actress fully was uh, on the show Atlanta, out here in Atlanta uh, with Donald Glover and his show, um, which actually won an Emmy. You know, I hopped on on the second season, first episode, Catch Tara. (laughs) And... um, yeah, that was like that's when everything really became very real for me. Like mm-hmm. I can actually do it and I'm actually doing it and I don't know when exactly I got here, but I'm here. <laughs> the transformation from cheerleader in pro sports to being an actress on television, was that a challenge for you? I won't say it was a big challenge because I feel like um uh, I pull from that same place whenever I'm performing, whether it's a uh, dance or or acting, or whatever it is, different, you know, from being a part of a, a large group where kind of we all share the camera at the same time, and uh, as opposed to being on set where, you know, your scenes are very intimate and on you. But um, I don't know, I kind of go to this place in my mind where I just am worried about what I am doing in that particular moment. So it's really not about how many people I'm sharing the camera with or or not, you know, I'm just zoned in, you know, so you catch what you catch. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. And uh, your character that you portrayed on Atlanta, what was the character? And, you know, just talk a little bit about your character, please. Um, my character on Atlanta, her name was Tara, and she was the love interest of Paperboy, um, which is one of the main uh, main cast members, played by Brian Henry. <laughs> and um, she, you know, she was just kind of that girl who, that uh, was always down, you know, for her guy. She happened to be with him while he was on house arrest. If you know anything about uh, <laughs> Brian T. Herring's character, you know, he's a hood boy, uh, rap guy in, in the streets. And, you know, she was just his, his uh, down chick. You know, so she came over, you know, she brought him food all the time. Um, you know, she was kind of one of the homies, really. I see. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. And would you say there's, you know, any... I guess, you know, um, moral to that story or anything that you actually learned as a, as a take-home lesson and stuff from being part of that? 
uh, oh my gosh, from being from being part of that production, obviously, you know, like we just said, that was my real first acting gig, and it happened to be with Donald Glover and Brian T. Henry and Lakeith Stansfield, you know, like these are top dogs in the game right now, so just to be in the room with them and them um, pouring encouragement into me was uh, unforgettable. I still think about those moments to this day, you know, it keeps me going on my uh, on my harder days, and um, mm-hmm. yes, so that's, okay. that's I want to say, the take all that I took from that, and uh, just the experience of uh, stepping it up to the next level as a professional, and um, just just really soaking in how they work, you know, how I needed to work, how you vibe with your um, your directors and your producers and everybody behind the camera. It was really like, okay, this is what this is about, and it built the confidence in me. Like I I did I, I did that thing. I felt I had to give myself a pat on the back after that day, and I was just yeah, it was just unforgettable. Talk about the importance of building relationships in the industry. Oh, my gosh. It is it is everything, you know, because the further you grow in this career, the more you, you kind of encounter so many different people that you, your radar for uh, genuine people is, like, off the chart. You can, you can pick it up, you know. I think even outside of this industry, just in general, you can pick up when people are being genuine or not. So you have to make sure that you are being – uh, the same across the board for everybody, everyone that you talk to. You treat no one differently, even if they're the uh, number one on the cast list or if they're just an extra. You know, I speak to everyone the same, and I've learned that that is what has helped to get me as far as I've gotten so quickly. Because sometimes, even being honest, you don't even know who you're talking to. You know, <laughs> right. be the writer of the show if you haven't done your homework, and you're being a uh, uh, a bitch for <laughs> lack of better terms, you know, you could have just shot yourself in the foot and not even known it. But when you make it a habit to just be a genuinely nice person and talk to everyone, you know, you're good. You don't even have to worry about or think about things like that. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. You were also a part of something that's been coming on YouTube now, I believe for a couple of seasons called step up high water. And mm-hmm. I, I want them to bring the television so bad. It is so good. Talk, <laughs> right. Yeah, talk about that for us. Talk about that. Okay, yeah. So that show, when I got uh, cast on that show, I was like, yes, a hybrid between acting and dance. I love it. You know, it's like that is me, you know, so I was excited to even be a part of the, the project. And it was produced by uh, Channing Tatum. So I was also excited about that. Big shout out to him. Um, and my character, actually, she's not a dancer. She was um she is, oh, I don't want to give away too much because my episode hasn't came out yet, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> she has an altercation with um, with the girlfriend of the, the main cast member, Don Dre, and I'll just leave it at that, but um, it was just dope to be on that set as well. My particular episode, this is kind of uh, just a side note, but that particular episode was directed by a female, a black female at that, Denise Cook. And her um, her assistant director was also female. And that was the first time I had ever seen anything like that. I was like, this is so inspirational. I was just taking it all in once again. And, um, yeah, that character, she was mad fun to play. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, she was a little party girl. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. I'm on uh, episode six of season two. I see. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you just brought up another point too, because you, you know, as you go, you know, from day to day, you know, it's like the industry is slowly changing. You, you're, we're starting to see more and more Afro American women, you know, and Afro Americans. Period. You know, in regards to, you know, if it's in front of the camera, behind the camera, you know, just a part of the process. You know, talk a little bit about being part of the process now. Uh, it is, you know, it is uh, completely changing, like you said a little earlier, with the Me Too movement and um, just in general with uh, black people stepping it up to a, a different level. I shouldn't even say stepping up because we've always <laughs> had mad creativity, but we've been given so much more um, of a platform and so much money circulating in in our projects. So to be a part of this growth and movement is just it's just unbelievable. I'm grateful to be here, and I'm excited to see how far we can go with this, these things. And I feel like it has a lot to do with why 
as such a newbie, I'm getting such um, real opportunities. You know, I feel like uh, because we have the money and influence now, or we have more of it, we can reach back and give opportunities to to newbies, you know, that wouldn't be there before. So I feel blessed to just be um, in the game at this time and uh, during a time where our stories are being shared. And, you know, I can bring what I can bring from the table from my real experiences as a black female. You have a current role in American Soul, the Soul Train story. Please talk a little bit about that, please. Um, my character on American Soul is Rose, and my episode just aired uh, last week, episode uh, six. And Rose happens to be Little Richard's lady, his girlfriend, if you will. And um, she was she was the funnest character I would say I've played so far. She was just she's a little wacky. She is crazy. Um, they have a very dysfunctional relationship. There's a very thin line between love and hate with them too. And um, I encourage you guys to watch it if you haven't already. You know, it's just a really uh, interesting dynamic there. And um, it was fun. I got to burn up some clothes, run down hallways, throw stuff at people, <laughs> <laughs> curse at people. You know, she was she was very different than my actual personality. So it was uh, it was fun on set. Everybody was calling me uh, the Tasmanian devil. And they were <laughs> just like, you are like two different people when the camera's on and off. So it was uh, it was fun, to say the least. Right. Okay. So now when Soul Train, and I'm not sure exactly how old you are, but do you remember the original Soul Train? Were you, you know, born at that time where you could, you know, see it actually? Uh, <laughs> I barely, barely. I remember, like, reruns of it. I, I wasn't around for, like, the actual okay. shindig. But I do remember um, faintly. Everybody remembers the Soul Train line. You right. know, I remember it being, you know, part of a – uh, celebrations, you know, weddings and, and things, you know, everybody did the soul train line. So just kind of, you always wonder, like, where does this come from? You know, so I, I heard about it for sure. I but um, it was this project that really educated me on how influential soul train was and what it meant for us as black people. It was the first show owned, produced, everything by, by black people. And we were seen for the first time on a television television screen in a positive light so i learned a lot you know but I no I, I was not around for the origin the origins of it i see so what do you think of the wardrobe what, what did they have you wearing and what do you think of the wardrobe uh it was cool man it was cool i remember going in for my fitting and having to try on all these different options and it's funny that a lot of those uh clothes that they were rocking back in the day are back in style now but we know how that that's how fashion works. Things come in and out. But um I thought, you know, it was cool to, to learn how the ladies wore their hair, you know, and our nails and everything from the bell bottoms and the, the crop tops. Um, you know, and on set they had me wearing um something I would totally wear today. <laughs> this uh mm-hmm. flared out um bell bottomed uh yellow dress with like a little low V cut and um these furry furry little heels um, they were red heels so they did a lot of color blocking back in the back in the day and that's what they had me in and my jury was kind of like big and gaudy you know mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, black people we love to uh we love some fashion so i'm glad i got to embody that and i feel like i would have dressed a lot of, a lot like rose had i came up in those days so i see yep. right Mm-hmm. Okay. I know from time to time they allow, you know, the actors to take some of the wardrobe, uh, uh, you know, home with them. Were you able to do that? or? No, nah, I didn't. I didn't take any wardrobe home. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't ask. I see. You know, I just wanted to do my job and and, and go home with no, no issues. You know, I didn't want to be that girl like, hey, can I have oh, <laughs> right. <no> shoes? <laughs> right. So, uh, but right. I thought about it. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of cute stuff in here. <laughs> cool, but, cool, yeah. okay. Okay. So what would you say in regards to, you know, other than, you know, or or basically let me ask this question. Um, did you have any major interaction with, you know, most of the cast or some of the cast or just your particular day, you just work with just those particular people or you know, how did you Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, um for 
for my my episode, I only worked with the people who were in that episode. Really, I, I didn't see many people from the other episodes. I um, so the main people that I was around that day was uh, Wayne Brady, who played mm-hmm. Little Richard, and um, Sinqua Walls, of course, who played Don Cornelius, cool. uh, and Christy Ferris, I who see. played uh, Jean. So, um, yeah, those are my, my scene partners. And, of course, you see the people uh, behind the camera that are there every day. Right, so. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So just an overall, you know, thought, you know, in regards to being part of that production, you know, what was it like for you? Uh, it was, if I had to sum it up into a few words, I want to say it was educational, for mm-hmm. one. Um, it was inspirational. And I think it um, set me up for success moving forward. You know, it gave me, um, like I said, that was my biggest role so far. So I'm excited to see what, what's next, you know, what comes from it after I was able to showcase my talent on a, you know, on a certain level, on a certain platform. What kind of response have you received from family and friends because you're on television? <laughs> they think it's so cool, you know. They just think it's so cool. My brothers and sisters call me like, "Oh my gosh, I can't mm-hmm. believe you know you're on TV," you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same, you know, because obviously they've been through this whole journey with me. Um, you know, my my mom and dad they love to see it, but they were like, "Ooh, I wish Rose didn't curse so much." <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, but you know, it's always a party like. Everything that I've done so far, my parents have literally thrown a whole red carpet uh, watch party event for, you know, so they are just extra in that way, and they're super supportive. They think it's dope. Okay. Have you been able to actually have them to come to premieres or anything yet with you? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, They always fly out. You know, they're always with me, or I'll go down uh, to Florida to be with them. You know, we're always together. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. So you, I, I know that you have your own, you know, individual stuff as well. Um, you're working on music as well as television projects. You know, talk a little bit about that for me. Okay. Yeah. On on the side, I got. Um, I'm working on an independent project. It's called Jade. I put out a short film already, really to see, you know, how people responded, if they would want more of that, and I got a great response. It is um, actually an action film, which is my ultimate goal. Like, I I want to do action so bad one day. My goal is to work for Marvel. So I took it upon myself to create something, you know, just to put it out there, put it on my demo reel. And, man, I was shocked by the response of it. So um, mm-hmm. now I'm working on expanding it into a – from a it's 15 minutes right now, I want to make it at least 45 minutes. You know, just mm-hmm. add to the story what happened before, what happened after. Right. And, um, yes, music, I dibble and dabble in that, too. Um, you know, I just got into it. I've, mm-hmm. You know, I've always, you know, been able to sing, but I guess it wasn't my first passion, you know. So um just kept been in the studio, and I'm happy about how that's going, too. So I have a single that I'm about to release called um, Easy to Love. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been that should be uh, hitting very soon in the next month or so, and cool. I also did a remake of uh, the '80s hit "Tender Kisses." So um, I'm excited about that too. I see. Oh, okay. So we're the style that you're doing is it R&B or what exactly? R&B, yeah, R&B. I, I miss R&B, like you know that real '80s '90s. R and B, you know, so uh right. I'm like, let me bring it back a little. I see. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay. So when it comes to, you know, just people just, you know, uh remembering you after, you know, all of this is over or whatnot, what would you like to be remembered for? Uh, I would like to be remembered for inspiring people. Inspiring, you know, just everyone but especially People who look like me. I'm I'm very petite. I'm a, um, a black female. You know, we deal with a lot just on a daily, and we have to constantly be reminded that we are capable of greatness. We're capable of doing whatever we want to do, regardless of what um, limitations people try to put on us. So I want to be remain, remembered for 
inspiring others to pursue their dreams just as tenaciously as I pursue my own. I see. Okay. And, um, you know, what else is coming up? What else are you looking to do that you've yet to do? Um, like I said, I want to, I want to get on into some action, action films. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, aside from that, I'm happy to say I'm, I'm doing exactly what it is that I want to do. You know, so I'm just going to keep pressing um, to be able to do it constantly, you know, make a lucrative living out of it. Right now, you know, I'm just getting started. But um, as long as I keep following this path, I believe that everything will be added on to me in due time. I see. Okay. And so for people that wish to follow you, you know, want to know how to reach you online, you know, how do they reach you? Okay. You guys can follow me. Um, I'm on uh, Instagram mainly. I'm also on Facebook. I'm Brianna Butler, 22. It's Brianna with two N's, Butler, 22. And um, I follow back, so (laughs) don't be shy. But there you have it, folks. That was Miss Brianna Butler, and she's on a roll, and she has the projects to prove it. You can catch her on the YouTube series Step Up High Water and the recent BET television series American Soul, The Soul Train Story. Also, look out for her self-produced work in music and film as well. For more information about Brianna Butler, you can visit her on Facebook, Twitter, and the like, and please visit YouTube to check out Step Up High Water and visit BET.com for information on American Soul and the Soul Train Story. Well, this has been Gary Clement for the Gary Clement Show and G2Network.com, and we'll see you next time.